When the US-led coalition invaded Afghanistan in 2001, one of the main justifications was that the Taliban were harboring al-Qaeda, the group, of course, behind the attacks of 9-11. It would take a decade before the Americans captured Osama bin Laden, hiding by then in neighboring Pakistan. And in the meantime, another even more violent group had taken root in Iraq, the Islamic State Group, or IS. Suicide bombings, beheadings, and enslavement of minorities were all part of their operations. More recently, the activities of both IS and al-Qaeda have shifted or been curbed. Neither has been stamped out. So what does the return of the Taliban mean for their future and their ideology of violent jihad? Dr. Shiraz Maher is director at the International Centre for the Study of Radicalisation at King's College London, and he joins me now. Good evening. Good evening. Shiraz Maher, should we assume that the return of the Taliban is a shot in the arm for groups like al-Qaeda and IS? I think at some level, of course it is. There is a boon to jihadist movements across the world who are interpreting this and regarding it as a victory for the global jihad movement. They regard it as a defeat for the United States. And so the return of the Taliban into Kabul itself is hugely symbolic. And the replacement of the Afghan national flag with the Taliban's flag is, again, another symbolic moment that will serve as a boon to these organizations. A boon, symbolism, but actually does it make them more powerful? Should pe people in Europe, people in the United States, President Biden was very clear that he you know, didn't want to see terror attacks in the United States, but should people be more worried that these sort of events will begin to rise again? I don't think we will see uh, an immediate return to terror in the way that um, you know we've seen uh, terrorist attacks in Europe and North America in 2014, 15, and 16, when the Syrian conflict was at, was at its uh, high watermark. But the point of these things is there is an opportunity now in Afghanistan. It's going to be once again a permissive environment for terrorist organizations, particularly for Al Qaeda and others, to have a bit of breathing space, to have a moment where they can catch their breath to rejuvenate, to attack plan yet again, and to work out what comes next. And so that doesn't mean we will see attacks tomorrow or the day after, but what it could mean is that there could be further attacks further down the line. And let's not forget, of course, the last time the Taliban went into Kabul was 1996. That was five years before the September the 11th uh, attacks took place, the kind of attack on that scale that requires a lot of time, a lot of training, a lot of preparation before you're able to pull it off. I've lumped together Al-Qaeda and IS. They are two different groups. Is it possible to say which is stronger and which may benefit more? In the context of Afghanistan, uh, Al-Qaeda has a long-standing historic relationship with the Taliban. And it's a relationship that is predicated uh, at one level on religious ideology, on an oath and on a sort of uh, sort of pledge of allegiance and so on that exists between the two groups. But it goes beyond that as well. Let's not forget that there have been fighters in the region since the 1980s who have traveled there, who have settled there, who, yes, they may have been foreign in, sort of in terms of ethnic origin, but over time they've settled into these areas, they've married into these groups. And so it's not just the case that oh, those guys there are Al-Qaeda and these guys here are something distinct and different. These may be your nephews, nieces, uncles, aunts that you're talking about. It begins to become a very enmeshed and complicated picture. So, you know, we saw in Doha uh, when these negotiations were taking place with the Taliban that the West, the United States in particular, was saying Al-Qaeda must not be allowed to return to Afghanistan. Well, how do you define Al-Qaeda within this context? Shiraz Maher, thank you very much indeed.